you may have heard of using single cycle waveforms on the Digitact before, which is where you loop a single cycle of some oscillator as your sound source, and then you shape that sound as if it was a synthesizer. This method takes that idea and expands on it, and it hinges on this one concept. Instead of sampling a single cycle of a waveform, we sample a short clip of sound while we're tweaking the parameters of the synth that we're sampling. This bakes musical decisions into our sample and turns the sample start point into a morph control for our synth voice. Now, I'm going to show you a beat I made using this method. Uh, then we'll collect some wavetables together, shape them into new sounds, and you can do this on your own. Okay, now it's time to sample some wavetables so we can build up new kits from scratch. And today we're going to be sampling mutable instruments, plats, and rings. Uh, right now there's nothing plugged into plats, so when I unmute it on the mixer, we're just going to hear the raw oscillator at a static pitch. So now I just want to name this sample, save it into my project, um, start a new project. I already have a project going here, but it's not going to affect what we're doing. Uh, 1226. That's not even the real date, but um, I'm just going to write that down anyway, and we'll just call it a uh, table. Table one copy the name, save, just like I showed this in another video, just, just go watch it. Next thing we're going to sample is this harmonic oscillator here with a little bit of effects on top. wavetable. Can we get a noise wavetable? For the last noise sample, <laughs> I guess I'll leave the reverb on. For the last noise sample, I'm going to just record me making a weird noise. Okay, now we have a bunch of wavetables and we want to make a kit out of them, a kit of sounds that we can then make patterns with, copy, paste the patterns around, all of that goodness. And we want to make a kit that maybe sounds something like this. Now, we're going to accomplish that because what I just showed you there is something that I made with the wavetables that we just sampled. So 
let's start with a hi-hat. I think it's going to explain a lot of the principles that go into this, and it's easier than the other one. So let's start with the hi-hat. So I'm going to go down to where the wavetables that we just made, five and six, are the noise wavetables. And this just sounds, if I give it a little bit of boost, you know, we just listen to it. Essentially, turn the whole time way down, here we go. Already kind of like a hi-hat. There's a couple things we can do with the hi-hat to give it a more dynamic sound. One, we want to introduce a little bit of filtering, maybe like a high pass with resonance around some resonant frequency. Also, we can change the pitch to see, get different hi-hat sounds. Uh, I like that, so I'm going to just pitch this up by a little bit. Say up by an octave, and uh, then also we can move around the start point to get different hi-hat sounds. Or we can switch to the other noise wavetable and see how that sounds. So I like the sound of that, but I want it to be more interesting. There's kind of two approaches here. One is I could put the hold time on note so that the hi-hat sustains as long as I'm holding it down, which gives me the ability to do like a closed hat, open hat kind of thing. So that's one approach. Or I can turn the hold time down and then modulate the hold time with an LFO and that will give me uh, a different result. All right, let's call that good for now, and let's move on to the snare. So to get to the snare, I'm gonna copy the track from track one to track two, and I'm even gonna keep the same wavetable, and right now we just have still the hi-hat sound. For the snare, we need some sort of punchiness, some sort of resonant ringing. We get that by using the low pass or the high pass filter and finding, we give it a lot of resonance. And then we pluck it a little bit with the envelope. Another thing we can do to enhance the punchiness of the snare is to give it an exponential pitch envelope, kind of similar to like you would do on a kick. So if I set the destination to tune, set the wave shape to exponential, and I set it to one-shot mode, speed it up a bit. It's a little hard to tell almost, but it gives it that kind of laser punch. little more obvious um, when you have a slower speed. But anyway, we have the snare sound, we have parameters that we can adjust to adjust its character, and um, that's basically done. Okay, so now we have a hi-hat and a snare. And we can pitch both of them across the scales chromatically. Cool. What's next? is a kick. For the kick, we're going to use basically the same formula as the snare, um, but we're actually going to use a different wavetable that I haven't shown you yet. So let me, it's just something I sampled earlier, let me just give that to you real quick. Okay, so now that you have that, I'm just going to copy and paste the snare sound and then navigate to the sample for the kick. And pretty much right away we have something that works, we just need to tweak the parameters a little bit to make it punchy for a kick. And there you have it, that's pretty much good. So let's talk about atmosphere and melody. 
I want to have a lead bass sound, and I want also want to have an atmospheric sound. The very first wavetable that we got is going to be good for the atmosphere, so let's mess around a little bit with that. So I want to kind of fade this sound in and out, so I want to give it a long attack and then a relatively long decay time, a little bit of um, overdrive just to drive the compressor. Maybe a bit too much. As for the modulation, maybe I'll just modulate the sample start point for now. So, sample start point, give it a bit of depth. Okay, that's that's good for now, so let me just copy paste this. And I want a plucky bass sound from this, so I'm going to I'm gonna change wavetables to the harmonic oscillator. Okay, so I selected wavetable three. I wanna put this into hold mode so it goes down as long as we hold the note. And I wanna give this a low pass filter envelope, so resonant low pass. Now we don't really hear anything, but if I give it the envelope, and I can adjust the envelope. I can add a little bit of band pass on top of that, and I can distort it with bit reduction, with the overdrive, modulate all the stuff, give it a little delay and reverb. And in fact, let me go to track four and just see how it sounds with some delay and reverb. Very foreboding sound. And then this. <laughs> it's a little comical, so let's maybe, let's, what about this? Oh, whoops, like that. Okay, so I like that there. It's fine for now. We're going to use the second LFO to modulate the filter cutoff so that it's a little brighter or darker depending on each key press. So let's go filter frequency, modulate on, on uh, sample and hold mode. Let's just go random. So let's call that good. Let's... It's not going to be the most amazing, perfect kit there ever was, but it's here to demonstrate a point. At the end of the day, this isn't about these samples specifically that I gathered here in this kit. It's about, there's a million synthesizer plugins, maybe you have your own gear. It's about sampling it in this particular way, and then creating kits from it that gives you more variety than a one-shot sample. So, let me know what you think of this. What how you're using it, what you like about it, all of that. Um, I had to make another video before the end of the year here, and here it is. I've been sitting on this idea for a while, trying to figure out the best way to present it to you. And this is what we got. So let's expect more in the future on what schedule exactly, I can't say. But um, I love you guys, and talk to you soon. Bye.